Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you so much for what you are doing in our days. We give you all the glory. Lord, I pray that your plan for our lives shall not be aborted. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We're considering the call for missionaries. The call for missionaries. I want to say that just as we had during the food for the spirit, we are saved to save others. We are blessed to be a blessing to others. God spent last weekend on us, fighting our battles, clearing our roads, disorganizing forces and powers, and right now, he's looking for whom he will use to share the glad tidings of great joy to those who have not heard. The call for missionaries. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Isaiah 6. Verse 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, do what? Send me. Here am I, send me. In the book of Jonah, Jonah, after Obadiah, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. So we see in the days of Isaiah, God was looking for whom shall I send? In the days of Jonah, God was direct. Say, Jonah, I've chosen you. Leave your father's house. Go to Nineveh. Go and warn them for me. In Acts chapter 10, from verse 17 to 21, the call for missionaries. Acts chapter 10, from verse 17 to 21. Now, while Peter doubted in himself, what this vision, which he had seen should be, mean behold the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon which was surnamed Peter were lodged there while Peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause? Wherefore ye are come. And they said, Cornelius. The centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, 
and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. Praise the Lord. We are reading account of a Gentile man called Cornelius who delighted in the God of the Hebrews, Jehovah, and who served him with the little knowledge he had with his entire family. Though a soldier, he did not allow his position to rub shoulders with God. He devoted his life, devoted his everything he had. He prayed, he gave, and God said, look at that stranger, look at that man from that other side of the city or state desiring after me but didn't know much about me God sent his angel that appeared before him in verse 1 of chapter 10 at Acts chapter 10 verse 1 there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him Cornelius and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. Praise the Lord. God gave him a revelation through the angel. He said, send your servants to go to Joppa in a house of Etana by the seaside. Ask of one Peter. Tell him to come. And he will tell you things you didn't know about me. And while God visited him, the same God visited Peter in a, a form of trance. He saw different types of animals. The ones they could eat and the ones they couldn't eat. And God said, the voice said, Peter, Kill and eat. Peter said, I can't eat an unclean thing. I can't eat. And the voice said, That which God had made clean, let no man call it unclean. As he came out from the trance, people were knocking at his door. And the Spirit of the Lord said, That's, you know, Gentiles had nothing to do with the Jews. The Jews called them unclean and as he was reasoning with his mind what could this vision mean behold a man from gentile nation was knocking at the door and the lord said that is it go with them so god sent him from where he was to where they are in Mark chapter 16, Mark 16, verse 15. Mark 16, verse 15. 16, verse 15 said, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the thing we have just done. Personal evangelism is binding. On every believer. Personal evangelism is something whosoever that had encountered Christ must commit himself to. And now call to missionaries. 
is a kind of special call given to out of the thousands of the believers that believed in Christ that had the general call to so winning these few were selected hand picked for a mission from the word mission you get missionary missionary is a person who is on a mission for the lord and so we now discover that it is god's plan he's looking for people whom he will send he's looking for those who will go around or run around for him in acts chapter 1 verse 8 acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 it says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth both in jerusalem and in judea and samaria and unto all the now he didn't say from them he said both in jerusalem and in judea and samaria in other words he's saying while we are doing it here we should be doing it somewhere else while we are reaching out of person to person within our neighborhood there are still need for some people to leave their neighborhood the place of uh, better conveniences and to where it is hurting many and that is it that's a god's call for missionaries and in chapter 22 of acts of the apostles the verse 21 acts 22 verse 21 acts 22 verse 21 the bible says and the acts 22 verse 21 it says and he said unto me depart for i will send thee far hence unto where unto the gentiles depart live where you are i will send you unto the gentiles that's paul after the encounter with the lord on the way to damascus he got himself and he said god said i'm now sending you to gentile world as a missionary i'm now sending you to such a place to rescue them to salvage them to share the gospel with them missionary god was sending him chapter 13 of acts of the apostles verse 2 acts 13 acts 13 verse 2 verse 2 says as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said separate me barnabas and saul for the work we are run to i have called them now these were they were barnabas and the paul saul they were in the midst of the brethren and while they were praying the holy spirit spoke and said in the midst of these brethren that are praying i have chosen barnabas and saul for a mission i am sending them for a mission they should leave the place where they are to exactly where i would want them to go and serve me church some may be expecting me to have continued from where i stopped last week last week had ended the program had ended the lord is now saying to all the beneficiaries of god's mercies of god's blessings 
He's saying, now I am looking for whom to send across the nation, Nigeria, in the cities, in the villages, and outside the nation, Nigeria, who should go there and stand for me, sacrifice their lives, their strength, their understanding, everything I have endowed them with. For those who don't have access to what we are enjoying here, I pray that somebody's heart will be touched by the Lord. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 22 to 24. Acts chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. They tied then, then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth who? Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. And he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord. Now, the church had scattered because of persecution that arose and Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Others in rescue for their lives went to different places. Now, the brethren heard that these people have gotten the gospel. And from the headquarters church, they were saying, whom shall we send to go and build up the faith of those little churches whom shall we send to go and encourage them fortify them strengthen them and help them for some months some weeks or some days and then where necessary come back or why they are doing the thing and it's like the brothers of Joseph, in order to destroy his dream, decided to sell him to Egypt. Little did they know that they were playing God's agenda. That it is in Egypt that he will be the governor. But it wasn't known by his brothers. If they knew that it was in Egypt that his dream will come to pass, would they have sold him to Egypt? Not at all. So I really, I will do my job. <laughs> but I don't know. I will do my job preaching, sharing to as many whose hearts are open unto the Lord. Well, it is left for them and God. You know, at times, we feel that where we shall be celebrated it's in the city. I, a pastor was preaching on radio. I heard him. He shared a testimony of a pastor who was moved from the city of Port Harcourt to one of the remotest places in this, in this city, a state. And he desired something at the time of his expectation in fact nothing happened well he obeyed and went and there he was he said okay god to thee be the glory and that thing he was expecting he should have gotten from the city couldn't come it was in that village where he was that the Lord opened his eyes and really made him to know who he is. Hmm. Uh, dearly beloved, 
Please hear me very well. As you are there looking at me, your life is not in my hands. It is in his hands. He has programmed about your life. And he knows how to bring it to pass. What to do for it to mature. You know, at times, some of us could be making a mistake. Or, well, Pastor, Pastor Water can make a mistake that will turn around to be your favor. Or it could be it is something. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. But does it, is there any need of giving you expo? I don't think. Let me swallow it. No, I need to. Listen, my Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whosoever that will come unto him must believe that he is. Now, listen to this. I went to Afipo. I was transferred to Afipo because I indicated to be a missionary. I answered the altar call to be a missionary. And I was sent there to prepare for missions. And it was really. Oh well, I didn't know that there's great task ahead of me. What I was, I said, this youthful blood of mine. I will give it to my God because of the book I read about three Americans graduates. They came out of the university and they said they are going to serve the Lord on missions. And they left, what is it called? America to Bumis, remote jungle. Left New World to Fort not told fourth world in those days to suffer. I said, what is what I was doing? I said, God, by the time I dropped the last pen in the exam, any jungle sent me. Let me go and work for you. That book I read put fire in me on missions. And when I came, indicated my interest to my state overseer, he said, you are going, go to Lagos. I had to go to Lagos. And I said, brother, now I know. There is so and so, you know, there is a missionary. So as soon as I landed, he now said, there is a mission field in Nigeria. Go to Afipo. With joy, I went. There, the Lord groomed me. I didn't know where I am today. I will stand. I went through a lot and a lot and a lot. It's not things I will explain. But all those things helped to build me up, prepare me, to make me to carry the load I'm carrying now. But if I knew I could, it would warrant all this, I would have rejected. And that's why I wouldn't give anybody a spoke. Obey the Lord as he will want you to obey him. Leave the rest for him. Nobody gave me a spoke. I followed by faith. And I hope somebody here will follow by faith. You are a man, you say, look one time. Oh, well, you know, with everything, the deliverance is over. That chapter is closed. We are now talking on mission. We are now talking on reaching out. Well, now, we, let, me, let me tell you this, brethren. If we continue eating and sitting down, no exercise, we become obese. And then we can't move, we can't get up. And by the time the weight of our feeding is overwhelming us, and we'll be adding weight without knowing. 
But when we are doing exercise, when we are jogging, jumping around, we are burning some fat, we are oh, some things, adipose tissues. Now, that is in the physical. Now, in the spiritual exercise, the spiritual exercise can be seen, not while we are sitting down in the field. It is, pastor talk, he would hear you. And God is making me to understand that those of you that are watching right now, God is bringing this call to you. Say, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Those of you who are there overseas already, Pastor Walter doesn't need to send somebody. God is saying, you are the instrument to be used to kick, start the church. You are the instrument to be used to start up the work. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, ye, the ground, listen to this, the ground that drinks the water that is poured upon it and brings forth briars and thorns instead of bringing forth good fruit, God says that ground shall be cursed. Those of you overseas, you relax in your sitting room, watching, say, Pastor Walter, ride on. In fact, that program that ended, in fact, Pastor Walter, it's a network that made me, I would have told you, as you were praying, commanding, my, I was hitting myself on the ground. Everybody, my house was shaking. Pastor Walter, you carry anointing. I love this. I love that. Is it why you are there? God is telling me to tell you, you are already on a mission to a foreign land. Don't expect me to send somebody from Nigeria there. By God's divine providence, you are there. There's no other Elijah to be sent. He has sent you. As you are hearing this now, begin now to think. God, this privilege I have that not many Nigerians have in Germany, have in Netherlands, have in Italy, have in America, have any part of the globe where you are watching me from. God, what will I use it for? Oh, pastor, you know, uh, here is walk, eat, sleep, walk, eat, sleep, walk, eat, sleep. And all the, uh, that's fine. That's what you will tell God on the last day. Is it what you will tell him? Oh, well, I will tell him. He should understand. Uh, I, this is Oyibo land. Uh, Oyibo land. They don't allow this. Uh, the, this and that. Don't worry. Some of our brothers and sisters are being killed. Put inside waterproof in one of the, um, in, I think, who saw the video? I don't know. Did you see a video where they put human beings inside water, white waterproof, tied it and cocked it for them to suffocate and die because of their faith? You saw it. Can I see your hand? Okay. These are believers. Be for believing in Christ, that's why they, put, they say you must deny Christ. You must deny Christ. And they said no. They, they naked them, put them inside white waterproof, tied them, kept them. No, there's no way air could enter that waterproof so that they will suffocate and die there. And die because of Christ. Now, it's, look at where you are. You are enjoying and you're saying, oh, well, a hey, pastor water, you should understand. Um, I am not called a pastor. Nobody is born a pastor. Myself standing before you, what I inherited is idol. It's the Lord that removed the idol from my hand and put Bible. So you that is hearing me, don't expect an angel to come. This, the angel of the Lord is talking to you. This is an opportunity. The angel of the Lord is talking to you. You are there already. What are you waiting for? You have friends in the office. Your colleagues, those in your WhatsApp, organizing them, telling them, or oh, in fact, I don't need to tell you, 
if you know that the Lord is talking to you and you say, Lord, just like Paul did, Lord, what will thou have me to do? What do you want me to do? If you will be humble enough to pray that God, I've heard Pastor Water. He has been saying this over and over and over and over again. That I am here on a mission. Oh God, what would thou have me to do? He will tell you what to do. But first of all, recognize this is the voice of the Lord speaking unto you. And to those of us in Nigeria, there are places, there are areas, there are things we really need to do so as to get there. Now, we look at qualifications for missionaries. Who are those that the Lord will use? What should be the qualifications for them to be used by the Lord? In Acts chapter 11, verse 24. Acts 11, verse 24. Acts 11, verse 24, the Bible says, For he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. The person the Lord should use must be a good person. Not a smoker, not a drunkard, not a railer, not a fornicator. A good man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, please open your Bibles. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9 from verse 19 to 23. 1 Corinthians 9. 19 to 23. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. That I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law. As under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law. As without law. Being not without law to God. But unto, under the law to Christ. That I might gain them that are without law. Verse 22. To the weak became I as weak. That I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. That I might by all means do what? Save some. And this I do. For the gospel's sake. That I might be partaker thereof with you. Praise the Lord. So we now discover something here. Apostle Paul said... To the Jews, he became a Jew so as to win them. To the law, he became a law. To those who are under the law, without the law, in any form or shape, he had to condescend to their state so as to reach them. That's one of the qualities, attributes of whom would be missionary to possess Humility. We are going to see th those things much later. In Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Acts 20, verse 24. Acts of the Apostle chapter 20, verse 24. 20, verse 20. He said, But none of these things move me, neither count I myself dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course. With joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So, Apostle Paul is saying all the sufferings, all the tortures, all the misrepresentations, all those things never moved him. What is concerned most is how to finish his cause. And this is a man that is dead. This is a man that is sold out for Christ. This is a man that has given himself all to Jesus. 
And my prayer is, all of us that are here, may the Lord do something remarkable in your life. May the Lord move you and touch your heart to the extent you will really respond to Christ calling at this moment. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be what? Gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that are opposed themselves. So, we now, we're looking at the qualifications. In meekness, ability to teach, ability to share what God has done in your life with others. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 9. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 9. You see, not because we have no power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Okay, let me read from verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. Whosoever the Lord will use as a missionary should separate himself from every brother or sister that walks disorderly. You want the hand of the Lord to rest upon you. You must not walk with somebody whose life has some question mark. You want God use me. God, just as I told you, I didn't inherit Bible. I inherited idol. That's what I inherited. But the Lord took away idol from my hand and gave, it, gave me Bible to carry, to go and preach. And that's it. So, one does not need to just be, uh, nobody is born with Bible. Nobody is born anything. Who in sin did our mother conceive us. And in sin we were born. And all have sinned and come short of God's glory. But as many that will receive the mercy of the Lord. And then hacking, God will do something in their lives. In Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Luke 14, verse 26. Luke 14, verse 26. It says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So for somebody to qualify to be used by God, he said the individual should hate his mother, hate his father, hate his brother, and all the rest. What does it mean? Let me explain so that you won't uh, get it on the negative side. I happen to be the first son of my parents. And when I... I was, um, I started by going to school under uh, scholarship. Government was paying me while I was schooling. Immediately I finished, I got automatic employment. All I did, the government did was to upgrade me from level four to level seven senior civil serv uh, 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 servants a salary scale and so from there I was helping my parents a little all of a sudden the Lord put a call upon me to now go on full time I had to resign my parents were there who were leaning on me for survival what would they do I'm trying to explain what it means. You have to hate your father, 
hate your mother. It's not saying that you will, they are no longer your parents. No. But when your love for them clashes with the love for God, you put that of them by the wayside and hacking to that of God. So when I considered, I, how do I tell them that I'm now going on full time? How would they feel? I didn't consider how they would feel. Why didn't I? If it was death that knocked at the door, my parents would not stop death from taking me. So if they had no power to stop death from taking me, now that God is taking me, they will not stop me. Finally, I must have courage. I told them, I said, I am now resigning. I'm now going to serve the Lord. This one looked to the other. The other one looked to the other. I said, okay. What can we do? I left. Not knowing how the end will look like. Not knowing how they wrote. So, if you are so tied to your parents, the Lord is calling you. You are too, so tied to your family, to your friends, and the Lord is ministering to you. You are so tied to your work. Jesus said, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. What happens? He cannot be my disciples. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So for God to use you in the level of being a missionary, I say, just I'm opening the package today. As we proceed, we'll be hearing, we'll get to know more about what I'm talking about and all the rest. Now, such a person will not be qualified. So there are numbers of things that can qualify a missionary into the ministry. Number one, he must have an experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. For somebody to qualify as a missionary, he must have, an, he must have had an encounter with Jesus if Paul did not have encounter on the way to Damascus, God wouldn't have sent him to Gentile world. He had an encounter. Number two, must live a victorious Christian life. The would-be or would-be missionary must live a victorious Christian life. Somebody that will read, studies his Bible, prays on his own, meditates on God's word, and then on daily basis. Number three, he must be a vessel unto honor. You know, the Bible says, in that great house, there are vessels. Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of, no, we will get to know the old days as we continue. Number four, he must be a man of prayer. He must be a man of prayer. Then, other qualifications that are attached, he must be called. To be a missionary is not something. The individual must have been called. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. The other qualifications is, such a person must have been called. If you are not called, you can't, there are certain things you see in the field, you get discouraged and run away. Number two, he is cleansed, Sanctified to meet the master's use. The would-be missionary. Not just only saved. He's sanctified and prepared for the master to use him. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1. 
chapter 2, verse 22. Okay, from verse 20. Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse, 20, from verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of art, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Look at this. If a man, if a woman, if a boy, if a girl, therefore do what? Purge himself from these. What will happen? He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. This is a message to everyone. This is a message coming to all and sundry. If after, or if while you are hearing this, you separate yourself as a youth, you dedicate yourself as a youth, you devote yourself as a youth, as others spend hours watching dirty, dirty things on the internet, you will spend hours to watch messages that will build up your faith, to hear stories about missions and missionaries, to hear messages about heaven. You are preparing yourself. You, it's not the, the thing you are put, you know, you are walking on the street. We hear some, you, the youth, you see earpiece upon them. Do you see such? The vehicle will be blowing on. Pee, 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 until it comes close. Ha! And what are they listening Chinking, ching, I go die, I go die, chinking, ching, I go die, I go die, chink. Even while they are going, they are doing their heads like this. I go die, die, you no go die. But chinking, ching, I go die. Now, now you are hearing this. The Bible is saying, if you will separate yourself from I go die, and now you say, I go live in Christ. Lord, I want to know you. God, I want to serve you. God, I want to live with you. And instead of listening, I go die. You are here listening Bible and you are hearing the first epistle of John chapter 1. And you are, you are is the, is the word you are taking in. It's the word you are taking in. And you start reading. And you start, you are, you are assimilating the word. You are assimilating the word. Okay, it, it, what are you saying? Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm here. I'm reading Bible. Okay, okay. You are reading Bible? Yes, okay. No problem. In the beginning was the world. And the world was with God. So, you are moving or you are in your car. You are playing, you are playing Bible. You are, you, you are, you've been separated. The Bible says, if a man therefore shall purge himself, shall separate herself, shall detach himself, and say, Lord, I'm hearing the word missionary. Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I make myself available. Lord, I make my, I want you to use me. Let me tell you, there is nobody God cannot use. A little boy. Have you seen a boy of five years old preaching? Have you seen that? Have you seen? Um, this is a girl that is singing, um, there is peace in Christ. I think, how old is she? As of that time, I think it's four, five years. Okay. So, and if your life is sold out for the Lord, parents, I encourage you, we stopped a program, all the teenagers from 15 to 18, we are kicking off this uh, coming Saturday. Send them to us. We have a plan for them. If they know the Lord and serve the Lord from this age, in your old age, you will rejoice. If you allow them to remain with them in the yard, playing on Saturday morning, or to go out over there, full of bad company, in your old age, hypertension will send you to early grave. Because while you are, you are thinking of what he did in the yard, Somebody else is called carrying the daughter. Come. It is. Uh -huh. 
Who, who, which boy pregnanted you? Look at him. As they're pointing at him, another woman is carrying her, his own daughter. Uh -huh. And then as if they had a meeting. Hey, which boy pregnanted you? The other one is now coming. Uh, come. What is this? He stole my thing. I pray it will not be said of your children. I say it will not be said of your children. So give them to us. Every Saturday, saying to um to give them to us. By the grace of God, we will see what we are going to do. What God will do in their lives. If we catch them young and they live for God. Oh, beloved, in your old age, you will be hearing good testimonies about them. And your death will be the death of the saints. You will call gather them together. Because no one brought heartache unto you. No one is, is it just tell them, children, continue with the Lord. Let me pray for you while you are praying. Mm. Uh, do, do, do you understand? That, that's beautiful. That's glorious. And you go home knowing that there are those that will continue from where you stopped. This is opportunity. Make them available. We have started only because of the program we stopped. This coming Saturday, please send them. By the special grace of God, we are believing God for those children that they are tomorrow, we will see Deborah's, Elijah's, and we will be seeing mighty men and women. We will be seeing engineers, Christian engineers, Christian doctors, and you will just see them here and the Christian professors. And, oh my dear, let me tell you, the Bible says, it said, raise up, bring up a child in the way he ought to go. When he grows old, what will happen? He will not depart from it. And I trust God is going to be wonderful. So those of us who are here, and you are saying, oh God, now Lord use me. God will use you. Number three, he must be consecrated to God. He must be. The would-be missionary. Number one, must have been called. Number two, must have been cleansed and meet for the master's use. Number three, must have been consecrated to God and to one single course of life. Number three, or four, included with humility. The would-be missionary must be humble. Must be humble. God doesn't work with a proud person. Must be humble. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. First epistle of Peter 5. Verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with what? Humility. For God resisted the proud and give it grace to the humble i pray that if you meet all this god will do wonders and lastly power from on high is highly inevitable holy spirit enabling is highly essential the Lord is saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Here I am, send me. Rise up and let's sing. Jesus sent more laborers. Jesus send more laborers. Boris, for Lord, we see the need. The land is ready for her. 
vest and the fields are ripe in thee. O Lord, but stars with me. Jesus, be
where I am, O oh Lord. Send me, Lord. Send me. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Daddy, don't look for anybody. I'm available. Send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Send me. Tell the Lord to send you. Lord, send me. Send me, Lord. Send me. Use me. And I want you to talk to God, tell God to use you in any capacity, in any area he wants that he will use you. Open your mouth and tell God to use you. Tell God to use you. Tell God to use you to bring souls to the kingdom. Pray that God will use you. Pray for his grace upon your life. Tell God to lay his hands upon you. Thank God to strengthen you and use you. Open your mouth and talk to God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we've heard your word this morning and we are praying we have prayed the oh lord in heaven king of glory i'm praying and asking according to the desire of your sons and daughters they have prayed they have talked to you may it be granted unto each and every one of us in the name of jesus father we make ourselves available before you praying and asking the oh lord in heaven that you lay your hands upon us and use us in this end time to bring souls to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. The grace to do this, O Lord, give to everyone that are at the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. May no one hear this message and go back and remain the same. While you are busy, Looking for men and women to send. May no one harden his or her heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any power anywhere saying no? Is it today that I started hearing this type of message? I will continue to keep them the way I used to keep them before. I will still quarantine them. I will still make them ashamed of Christ. I command you power. To be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the children of God be delivered from your chest, from your ropes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, release your power upon your sons and daughters. Make every one of us talking machine for Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for another answer. I cover the message, the prayers, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Receive all the praises and honor for I know, O oh God, that you've answered us. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Be seated.